burndown chart in Jira allows one to predict if a team will complete its working time and it indicates the amount of completed and remaining work during the sprint. Moreover, it also reveals all the changes in the work scope. This chart is very useful in analyzing the team's work. For example, with the help of the burndown chart, we might see that the team is often finishing its work faster than planned, which could indicate that team members take less work during the sprint planning than they could actually complete. There is also a reverse situation. If we notice that the team is often late in completing tasks by not finishing them within the duration of the sprint, that usually means that the team is too aggressive when they plan and they take more work than they can do in one sprint. This is also a warning sign of a problem that can have a significant negative impact on your project. Let's have a look at the burndown chart for our Scruffy Sprint. But before we go there, make sure that full board is selected. Remember, we earlier said that most of the reports work in the context of the currently selected Jira board, and we want all issues to be included in the report, so we need full board selected. Soon, we will see how switching boards affect reports. So, with full board selected, click on Reports and then click on the burndown chart. The burndown chart represents the remaining work plotted against the elapsed time. The vertical axis indicates the remaining work expressed in either story points, issues count, or original time estimate, which can be selected from this dropdown. The horizontal axis represents the timeline of the selected sprint and you can switch between multiple sprints using the drop-down over here. There are two key elements to be aware of. First, the gray line dropping from left to right is the guideline, and it represents the ideal pace the work should be completed at. The second is the red line, which represents the actual completion of the work. It is fairly simple how it works. At the beginning of the sprint, which is the beginning of the horizontal axis, the red line shows the total effort of the work planned for the sprint, which is the sum of story points from all issues planned for the sprint. In the case of the Scruffy sprint, that effort is 12 points. Then every time an issue is completed, the number of story points associated with that issue is deducted from the sprint total and the red, red line drops for that amount. Right here on January 21, issue WB25, which was estimated at three points, has been completed and marked done, and the red line went down those three points, indicating that there were nine points of still not completed work on that day. The diagram also indicates non-working days, weekend in this case, with these gray areas. And you can see that guideline is flat over these areas as no work is expected to be completed in those days. There is an option to turn off showing non-working days and get more continuous experience of the work progress. Underneath is the list of events that happened since the sprint started. And there we can see when each issue has been included in the sprint, when it was completed, and how that affected the remaining work. In the sprint progress lesson, we did a lot of movements of issues across different statuses before we actually completed the sprint. Let's review how that got reflected in the burndown chart. For the most part of the first week, developers were working on a couple of stories, but the red line remained flat. Then here, the line went down as WB25 has been completed. After that, the weekend kicked in, no work has been done, and the red line remained flat. Then here, two stories were completed on the same day, WB24 and WB33, and the red line went further down, even below the gray line. After that, work continued with no completions until here, when the final two stories were completed and the red line came down to zero, 
indicating the team completed all the planned work. Don't expect your sprints to progress perfectly like this one. Scruffy Sprint is not a real-life sprint, and it is meant to demonstrate board and workflow features. So it was intentionally kept very clean, so to say. But don't worry, we will shortly look into examples of burndown charts from the Rio Jira project. Let's see what happens if we select a different board. From the board dropdown, we will choose the tasks board. And we unfortunately get sent to the active sprint screen, which is another Jira nuisance, but we can right away click on reports and burn down chart and get back. Notice that the chart looks completely different. The reason for that is the board filter is applied to the chart. And in this case, we see the burndown chart only for issues that are task type, because that is how we define the filter for this board. Although Jira boards and reports working together by sharing the same filter might not seem like a big deal, it is actually a very useful feature. The primary reason we are creating boards is to manage a specific subset of sprint issues, like high priority issues or stories representing features separately. Without insights that reports provide, it would be practically impossible to efficiently do that. So boards and reports will be your best friend whenever you are in a position to participate in a moderately large or complex project. Let's review a couple of real-life burndown charts. This was a four-week sprint and it can hardly get better than this. The team planned to complete just over 100 points of issues, and you can see that at the end of the sprint, they succeeded since red line dropped down to zero. Over the course of the sprint, red line is nicely swirling around the gray line, never getting too far from it. It stayed above for the first week and a half, as the team was working on the first set of stories. And then here, a lot of stories got completed within two days and the red line fell below the gray line, indicating that the team was progressing ahead of the linear speed. Then it stayed flat for a while and the team added some issues to the sprint at these spots. And eventually, towards the end of the sprint, the red line started to go down again and end it at zero. The next sprint doesn't look nearly as good as the first one. It started well, but then halfway through, something happened and barely anything got completed past this point. As a result, when the sprint was completed, there were about 70 points of issues that were not completed, which is not desired, but it happens. One thing to notice is that team for whatever reason, planned to complete 180 points, which is much more than they planned and completed in the first sprint. That will be even more obvious when we look into velocity chart a few lessons down the road. Anyways, this is a good example of useful visualization when things don't go well, and it is also a mandatory topic for sprint retrospective. So far, we have only looked into burndown charts for completed sprints. And you might wonder, how can we use a burndown chart to foresee problems early, while sprint is still going and we can still do something to rectify problems? Here is the burndown chart for the third sprint, while the sprint was still in progress. You can see that the red line does not go all the way to the sprint end, but it goes all the way up to the current day when this snapshot was taken, allowing us to check daily how well or not so well the sprint is doing. In this case, we can see that the red line has been above the gray line all the time since the beginning of the sprint, indicating that team is running behind and has to do something to catch up and get closer to the gray line. Looking at several real burndown charts gave you an idea of how a burndown chart, burndown chart can be utilized in different scenarios. In the next lesson, we will look into the burn up chart, 
But before going there, if you're following along, make sure you will switch back to the full board.